Hey, hello and welcome. This is RP Fridays, number 20. And I want to show you the very first game made in UiPath. Just for those who don't know me, my name is Roman and I'm from Robot ICT, company based in Czech Republic that focused on IT and process automation. And also we have our own uh, network automation solution for large IT infrastructures and data centers. If you would like to know more about us, all the links are in the, are in the video description. We also have our own academy and community forum. By the way, on our community forum, we still have this contest to win this funny t-shirt. So if you would like to win this one and you know a bit of some RPA tool or automation tool or even Python, go in the link in the description and you will find these uh, challenges here. If you solve at least one, you get this t-shirt, but it's only up till end of this month. So today topic, today, I will challenge myself. I, I will show you how I challenge myself in doing something uh, that's not uh, supposed to be do doing in UiPath. UiPath is a software for automating things like clicking or typing for replica replication of human actions. So what I did uh, was to, I asked myself, hey, could I possibly build a game, a computer game in UiPath? And guess what? Yes, I did build a computer game in UiPath. And this computer game I called Calculator Run. Um, so I will show you, I will not live code it this time, but I will show you how I build it and explain you steps in the code. It's actually not that big. It has few activities and it's, I believe, quite funny. So the goal of the game that I created is to run away using a mo uh, mouse cursor from the calculator ap application. And the calculator will go faster and faster uh, and then you have to still uh, manage to run away from it. So the calculator will not catch. I will demonstrate in just about a half minute. You can set up time to play and in the end you will be shown a score. And uh, if the calculator will collide with the cursor, it will go red, so like you, you are hit. So if you would like to uh, try it yourself, you can download the workflow, run it and play in UiPath. It's first link in the video description. Now let's take a look, uh, let's uh, go together and take a look at the game itself and try to run it and play it. So this is the code, it's uh, not really big and I will go, go through it just in a minute. And now let's see what it does. I hope it's, this will be running smooth since it's taking a ridiculous amount of CPU uh, uh, just to do this simple motion, but it should give me a little option. So how long do you want to run away from a crazy calculator? Now let's for demonstration choose 10 seconds. And I also included a little uh, countdown, like three, two, one. Okay, I will hide somewhere in the corner. And once the countdown is done, the, the window of the app starts moving around and try to catch me. Eventually, if it goes to mouse, it should go red. Okay, it's not really working now. But then I have the final score uh, of some points in 10 seconds and I reached level two. I'll explain about levels later, you can dig in my code. And I've been hit 59 times since I left the mouse there for a long time. So let's take a look at the code itself. So it's really not complicated, it's made in UiPath, uh, using just few activities for uh, that maybe you never used before, but they are there, and it's uh, quite fun. So first thing first, here I'm providing an input dialog for the player to set up some time to play, because the longer you play, then the game goes faster. Obviously, if you uh, the game uses some kind of logic of infinite loop, so in case you will have faster computer or maybe you have less applications on, it will work in other way. Well, it's uh, I'm, I was trying to do a game and well, it's not uh, definitely perfect, but it's interesting uh, moment. So here I'm opening an application, a calculator. Uh, I also included my own special screenshot. So it's a special code. And here is what's happening. First, first there is a small section, a small sequence of a countdown where I'm using a one type into activity, typing in three, two, one with a thousand milliseconds delay between keys on the right side. So that makes it so slow, three, two, one. Then I'm setting a start time and uh, this is uh, just a date time, a variable start time. And uh, I initiate some kind of a uh, while loop. So it will go around this as long as the time from start is smaller than time to play. 
and uh, these two uh, these two activities are set up by a uh, time to play is set up by this input dialog and time from start will be updated through the loop you will see it first thing i used to this activity you may not use before it's called get position doesn't have really much options right there but it will get position of uh, the window or anything you have selected to it since i'm inside the open application scope i don't have to specify the selector or the element because it will take the element itself of the window itself so the target is empty as you can see um, but it's fine and the only thing i'm i filled in here is the output which will create a calculator position variable of a data type rectangle and from this data type of rectangle, I can, uh, you know, just um, mine details I need. So then the next step is a huge multiple assign activity, and I'm getting the coordinates. Coordinates in pixels from left top corner on your screen. You can imagine this is an x axis and this is an uh, epsilon axis or yeah, a y axis. So here I'm getting the axis, uh, the uh, x coordinates and epsilon coordinates for calculator using um, just this um, calculator position variable that I used before and um, a function or method dot x or dot epsilon you can go and download the code and search it yourself in the same way I'm getting uh, width and height of the calculator and the last thing I'm getting to do the next steps is add the coordinates of the uh, cursor, which uh, this is a little bit more complicated, but there is a little um, way how to get it. System.windows.forms.control.mouseposition.x and similarly dot epsilon, and this is the way how you uh, how I get all the details. And now I store them in variables, so it's easier for me then to uh, work for them. And then the next thing are the two main keys for this game, a key activity so sections for this game the first is move window this will uh, achieve using this move window activity i achieve the movement of the window well okay no surprise so how it works i will show you a little graph that i created for you so the principles of following the cursor are rather complicated but imagine this is a computer screen and there as i said is like an x-axis and a epsilon axis or you can call it y-axis and then uh, each of these things that I'm working with, the cursor and the calculator, also uh, I can get those coordinates of the position. So I can get cursor epsilon and cursor x and also for calculator. Also I'm using calculator width and height uh, for this uh, little move activity. So the move activity actually inside has uh, these all parameters like height, width, so it can change the uh, uh, height height and width of the um, application and also its x and epsilon position so when when you take a look here there is a little uh, in inline if clause uh, if condition so I, you can actually maybe you see you see it for the first time but you can use if conditions inside uh, an expression like this so and this is like uh, initiating of the condition this is the condition itself then the comma then a uh, true branch and then else branch or like then and else branch, true and false branch. Okay, you got me, right? So uh, here I'm checking if the cursor cursor of itself lies like say left from the middle of the calculator position or right from the middle of the calculator station and in both axes. So let's say in X, in X it would be, just, just imagine we are, we are working with horizontal axis in, in that way. If my cursor is left, from the calculator, the calculator has to go left in this direction. Eh? And if it's on the right side from the calculator, it has to go right. And I'm doing a little magic here with this uh, calc uh, width and calc height uh, uh, divided by two. So I'm actually using the middle of the calculator itself as the point that is actually following the cursor. So you can imagine that the middle, middle point of the cursor is following it. Uh, of the calculator is following the cursor so if i won't move my mouse it will stay there in the middle uh, and the same goes with the uh, y axis so then it's two dimensional so it will follow uh the calculator will follow the mouse okay you can try it and explore it yourself but this is pretty simple 
And maybe you're asking, what is this level? So level is a variable that is uh, one on the beginning or maybe zero, and I'm increasing it later. So since you play longer, it will uh, it will be moving faster. So the level uh, value will increase, and then the calculator will follow uh, faster. Then the next one is uh, this big uh, if condition where I want to check whether the whether the calculator actually is within the area of the uh, cursor. So if there is a hit, right, if the cursor is within it, the area. And I'm using this condition that I actually uh, will dis, uh, explain. Uh, so if you take a look at it, uh, I, you can separate that there are two same things. One is for the Y axis and this one is for the X axis. And I'm just checking if the cursor uh, position is uh, like higher uh, or bigger than the calculator position. And in the same time, it's smaller than the calculator position plus its width. So if it's within this area by using in, in both coordinates, if any, if the cursor is anywhere inside the calculator current position and size, right? So uh, in case it is, then I'm actually decreasing something called score. And uh, also I'm counting uh, how many times it was the, the, the calculator the user has been hit. And I'm also using this highlight activity to highlight the calculator itself for 30 seconds. And it makes this interesting effect as like in a computer game. Unfortunately, it was not really working uh, when I demonstrated. So maybe I will just uh, give there 100 milliseconds and it will be better. Because if you put too small number, it may not be uh, visible from some reason. Okay, look, I'm experimenting with things that were definitely not made to create a game. So you have to forgive me some details. And then the last thing is that I'm counting time from start with some little conversion of daytime. Not, I'm not really gonna go deep. And here is the uh, level. So I'm I'm trying to increase the levels. That's like the uh, speed in the end. That that will be the speed by taking the time from start and dividing by five. So uh, and yeah, rounding it up. So once uh, the time starts uh, ticking. Then every five seconds, I'm increasing the level slowly. So when I run then 60 seconds, it will be really fast in the end. Maybe it will be even really too fast. Uh, and I want to say that this is actually running in kind of infinite loop. And there is uh, only what is happening is this moving and count calculating. So it takes quite a lot of CPU time just to do this single thing. And uh, it's definitely fun. In the end, when, when this um, while is done when time from start is uh, bigger than time to play. So when the time uh, elapsed, uh, the window is closed and I'm getting the uh, final score. So let's try to run it once again and maybe a little bit longer. So I'm gonna run it. Hopefully all will be good. And pick, oh, okay, let's go, let's, let's be moderate, 30 seconds. And let's see what it will do. So first the countdown, that's just a single type into activity. And then the calculator will start following me. And I hope the stream won't go laggy because it really takes a lot of CPU, but it starts to go slowly. And when it will find me, it, and now you can see the red, uh, the red hit, how I'm hit it, how it hit me. And it goes slowly faster and faster. And it's kind of funny, funky. And if you have two monitors, it will actually travel through your monitors around and try to catch you. And later and later, it's quite harder and harder to actually run away. And that's it. Good. I have been hit 35th five times and my score is 2,136 points. And I reached level six. So you can eventually uh, try to uh, set the limit of time for, I don't know, 90 seconds. If you have a big monitor, you can run away. You can change the application. Well, if you wish, just download the code and play with it. Because, I mean, in a, in a, in a modern world, we have too much stress and too less time to play. So it's good to play. And that's pretty much it. I didn't mention this time that you can actually ask me questions during in a chat and I will take a look at them and learn uh, and answer them. So there are still no. So now if you have any questions to this game, you can, you can uh, uh, ask me and I will answer your questions. But this is pretty much it. And don't forget to try it yourself and download it and play it and maybe adjust it. You can uh, change the application. Maybe a solitaire window can uh, run and follow you. Uh, maybe you can, uh, I don't know, create anything else, or maybe 
uh, have a game that uh, many many new windows will pop up and you have to be fast and close them you know take this as an inspiration and i encourage you to try some new project and let me know in comments what you think about this one good so these were the principles and now time for your questions and if there are no questions then it's fine and you can leave them later in comments and i will definitely answer them so um that was today's uh rpa session rpa fridays number 20 thank you for your support i'm really grateful for that i hope the stream was smooth and thank you for your attention just as a side note you can visit our community forum and you can sign up for these video uh, webinars by using one of the links so you won't miss it thank you if you like this webinar i appreciate if you put the like button uh, hit the like button and eventually subscribe to our channel and i wish you a lovely weekend thank you for your attention wish you happy automation